Hi, this is David. Today I'm going to talk about the Video Indexer tool, which is a tool from Microsoft that allows you to analyze videos using artificial intelligence without writing any code. It sounds too good to be true, but you can get to it by going to videoindexer.ai right here. It'll probably prompt you to create an account or to sign in with your Microsoft account. Um, I've already done that and it's cached that, so it didn't ask me that in this example here. But from right here, I've got a few of them here, and if I, I can show it in this tile view or I can change to the list view, and this emphasizes that actually this has been around a while. I was playing with it four years ago and then I've just recently started getting into it again. Um, so I've got a few videos out there, but I'm going to create a new one here, or analyze a new one. I've got a video right here. It's from a Give Camp way back in... 2010 and what's interesting about this video is one it's not super high quality you know the the, the resolution is fairly low the audio was uh, there was no separate microphone I was just using a camera audio but it has a lot of scenes in it, it has a lot of people in it and this was a charity event that people were writing code for and so I switched scenes quite a bit and it had cupcakes so I'm going to use that one I'll click on this upload button and I can either enter a URL out on the web, I want to point to a, say, a YouTube video for example, or I can upload a video from my local machine, which is this one, the one I just showed you, and ask me a few things, Do I want? To, what's the title of this video, what's the language, this will really help because one of the things it's going to do is to determine speech to text. It'll recognize what you're saying and what people are saying and turn that into text. Uh, you can say whether it's going to be private or public, I'm going to keep this one private for now. And then there's an agreement, you notice upload is not enabled until I check this checkbox. There's some legal things. Currently Microsoft is not allowing this technology to be used by police departments. They're waiting for some sort of guarantee that it's not going to be used for, for nefarious purposes and once there's that uh, commitment I think that I, I'm assuming that, that that will change. But right now you have to do this and there's also some regulations around do I have access to this and the rights to this video. So if I wanted to upload some Hollywood movie that I don't have access to and share that, there may be some legal things around those. Um, so it's going to run it here. Right now this 23% is just the upload. It's just uploading it. That, this video, let me show you really quickly, it is um, 744 megabytes and I think it will tell you here that is 16 minutes long. So it gives you an idea of the relative size, how long it takes to upload, how long it takes to analyze a video. It takes maybe a minute to go through the upload process and then we'll see the next step which is going to be the analyze step. And that analyze step takes for this video, I just did this earlier today, and it took about 15 to 20 minutes to do the analysis of this 16 minute video. So you can use that as a gauge for your videos and how long they might take to upload and to analyze. I'll wait till this finishes and then what I'll do is I'll put it on pause so you want to stare at the screen for 15 minutes and I'll come back when the analysis is done. Now it's completely upside, uh, uh, uploaded, it is indexing, it's only at 5% now and this is a good time to pause the video. I will see you on the other side. We are back. The video is done indexing. It took about 19 minutes for that particular video. And if I click on it, I can see the results of that. Here's the video over here. I'll pause that for now. And you can see the different categories on the right side. So it recognized people, for example. You can see all these faces in here of different people that it recognized. So for example, this is my friend Josh. That's him right there. And you can see that it says he's there at the very beginning of the video. He also appears over here and over here. He appears multiple times. So it didn't recognize that he's Josh. As he's, I guess, not famous enough for that. But if I go to the next one, he's in this video here. He's in this section. He's in that right there. And I, I think that was interesting because he's actually in the background. I'll mute that for now. And <laughs> there, and it still recognized him. And um, you'll notice that a few of them, it did try to identify them, match them with famous people. For this one, it thinks this fellow right here is P.J. Hill. That is not the American football player, P.J. 
Hill, uh, I guess it must look like him. I'm not really familiar with that player. And in fact, it's according to this, he was 70.5% certain that it was. This is not the boxer Richie Woodall. This is my friend Michael. Uh, but I guess he looks enough like that boxer that you could think so. The rest of these are just unknown folks. It did not match them up with anyone famous. Down here are topics, things like web design. Um, it's able to do that because of doing the transcription. It's using speech, turning speech into text. And I'll show that in a second, but there's also keywords in here, and you can see for any given keyword, if where it talks about websites, here they are. There's, there's the first website. I can jump ahead to each part where it says something about websites. Um, different labels, just topics they're talking about, entities sorted by location, and people, Jay, Phil, Betsy, and so on. I could find it wherever Betsy is mentioned right there. Uh, emotions, this is looking at facial recognition to determine whether or not they're happy or sad or angry or frightened, whatever. Um, and something related to that, if I, I turn on sentiments, sentiments will look at their their voice. It'll analyze what they're saying and saying, is this a positive sentiment or is it a negative sentiment? It's just a scale of zero to one uh, to say, are you saying something positive or are you saying something negative? Uh, then it splits it up into scenes here and there are 12 different scenes and if I jump to each one, there's the first one and here we are, you can see it's different locations. I keep moving the camera around and these are all different clips. I was walking through this give camp just interviewing different people and so on. And for each scene, you notice for this one right here, there are different shots. So this whole this scene right here runs from 14 minutes and 39 seconds to 16 minutes and 53 seconds. So about two and a half minutes long. It's all in the same location, but there are different shots within that location that are next to each other. And there are even some keyframes if you want to do like a thumbnail. You could grab one of these keyframes to show. So all this information is in here. I mentioned the transcript earlier. We can grab that um, with, uh, if we click on open in the editor, that should show the transcript. You can see right here who's speaking, what they're saying. Um, it'll uh, A lot of this is dependent upon how the quality of the audio. This wasn't a great quality audio, but it's pretty good. It's able to say things like, what is it? Uh, we are helping them out getting out. This, or any websites, they have no web presence at all. Uh, finally, if you want to download this and work with it later on, you can download the uh, the source video and just download this video right here, and that's fine. Download the closed captions. That's the text, the, the speech to text, and there are different formats. These are standard formats that are being used. VTT is the one that I often use. You can include audio effects if you want to hear doors slamming or whatever. I don't think there's anything like that here, but click on download. And if I do that, then in my downloads file here, VTT, you can see this format looks like this, where it's from 2 seconds, 2.4 seconds to 5 points. It's geeks get together, here they are. That's what it's saying here. And it even tells you the confidence. It's In this case, it is 79% um, confident that that is what it says. So other times it's less confident. This one seems to be hovering right around 78, 79, 84 percent and so on for each one of these things. Uh, it also, I told it in advance that the English was US. That makes it a lot easier for this thing to understand what is going on. But I can download some other things. So right here I can download the insights. And this is really useful here. Now there's a JSON is actually the MIME type recognizes browser so it, it wants to display it in the browser but I can come in here and say let me grab it and just call it uh, whatever um, givecamp.json I think that'll work. Yeah. And if I open that which I have right here I'll open that up in Visual Studio Code uh, because that allows me to recognize that it's JSON and format appropriately. In here is all sorts of information in here. So if I wanted to jump to, for example, emotions, there's all information about all the emotions detected, the times at which they were detected, the you know, start and end time, um, 
all the all the times we saw somebody that looked like they were really happy, all the times they looked like they were afraid or sad. If I want to jump to the scenes, here's an entire section on scenes. When they start, when they end. Second scene, when does it start and when does it end and so on. So all that information is here in this JSON file. If you wanted to analyze it after the fact and build an application around that to, for example, pull out scene number three or look for where um, uh, Josh appears and grab the four scenes that he's in, but grab the entire scene even before he walks into the scene. That might be a useful thing to do. So there's all sorts of use cases for using video indexer. You can, for example, use the generated uh, transcription and the generated keywords to enhance your search experience and provide an index for users to search your videos more accurately. Um, you can create highlight reels from the various scenes, maybe based on the people or the things that are mentioned in them. Um, you can do closed captioning. If I click on this right here, you'll notice that this video right here supports closed captioning so give it a second that if I turn on this and set my closed caption to English right here then it'll actually provide some closed captioning right here. So you can use that implicitly or you can have a transcript elsewhere. Uh, you can do content moderation it says somewhere I don't know, bleep out dirty words, for example. You can do that because you have the text right here and you can analyze it. Um, you can point to specific parts of your video and use that for recommendations. If somebody has uh, uh, wants to find a specific, specific point where something is mentioned in your video, that's perfectly accessible. And you can take that data and you can push it into some other machine learning model and use that to analyze it and do whatever you want with that, to index your videos or your audios as well. If you don't have video, this, a lot of these tools will also work with audio. So this in a nutshell is Microsoft's Video Indexer AI tool. It integrates with Azure Media Services and with Cognitive Services. This is David. Thank you for watching.